Hello and welcome to you. This is Slade Suter broadcasting from the Authenticity Radio Studios here in Catalonia, Spain. The EU seed controversy, the EU seed marketing law, it is about uh, a new regulation that will de facto ban all rare varieties and farmer varieties and stop all the exchange of selling of traditional seeds. But what does this really mean to us? So today, I have joining me again, Juliet Yevernton. And if you remember, she was the one who did One Big Garden. So Juliet, welcome back to you to Authenticity Radio. Welcome, Slade. It's a real honor today to have this opportunity to uh, speak about this very urgent um, need to uh, um, write about this law that's being passed. So thank you for giving me the space to do that today. Well, it's my pleasure. And you speak about urgency. What, what, what's the deal? What, tell me what's on the plate today. Well, there is a, a law that is about to be uh, voted on in the EU and it is a law that's been pushed um, by the DJ, DG Sanko, the Directorate General of the EU for Sanitary and Consumer Affairs. They have been lobbying for many, many years for regulations to license and register all traditional seeds, vegetable varieties of seeds. So basically, they want to ban all our traditional varieties unless we have gone through the licensing procedure and had them registered. Okay, so it sounds like a possible money-making opportunity. What, what, what is their slam? Why, why do they want to do this? Why, why, why would they want to project or to make a law like this? Uh, well, they're part of the globalized agricultural seed industry, such as Monsanto, that many people are hearing about these days. So um, by making this law, it really controls which seeds we can use or which we can't use. And um, only those seeds that can be registered will be allowed to be used. So for me, for instance, I see I save my seeds and I've had seeds given to me. Um, I will then become a criminal, basically. <laughs> and, oh. um, yes. So I can see you behind bars. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> so it means that we don't have the freedom anymore to use the seeds that we've always traditionally used. And only those companies that have enough money, because it, it takes an enormous amount of money to have a seed licensed and then registered, only those seeds that sell at vast quantities, for instance, like um, the tomato moneymaker is a, is a kind of popular seed, um, only those seeds will be affordable for people. And um, so that means people like myself or, or small businesses, farmers and so on, will go out of business because they can't, um, either they have to use these very limited varieties um, or they wouldn't be able to have their own seeds registered. It would just be prohibitive. So it's control on the market and the biodiversity would be also controlled. And, and that, that seems to be a, a, a hitching point right there, doesn't it? And so it seems like we have rights being stepped on uh, to choose uh, which seeds you would like to grow and to defend your, your, your local varieties of, of vegetables and other seeds. And then also, uh, it seems like we're setting ourselves up for a monopoly. Absolutely. So there are two major points here. There, this is a two-prong thing. It's that one, it's a very serious issue of loss of personal freedom and control mm -hmm. because what, what we're seeing happening is a globalized um, food industry. So this, this is so crucial that we lose control of our right to grow the food that we need. And the second issue is an environmental issue, is that um, biodiversity is very dramatically affected when we limit uh, which, which plants we grow. Mm -hmm. Nature is very, um, uh, 
uh, very diverse, very, there, there's such um, a, a beautiful, subtle, tender interconnection between all, all the plants and, and all the insects and animals and the environment and our seeds that we personally have tended and um, passed down from generation to generation are seeds that are exquisitely developed to be strong and healthy in that particular ecosystem or that niche that we have created or that is there in our, in our particular um, microclimate. So it, it means that we no longer have that incredible diversity and that many, many things in the food chain suffer. And, mm. and that we suffer because of our seeds and the food that we're growing is also very suited um, to our own bodies. I don't know if you um, came across the Anastasia books, whether she's true or not, I don't know. But she really talks about this, how totally attuned our food is to, um, you know, when we, we create our own gardens and we plant our own seeds. It's very attuned to our own um, health. Wow, Julia, you, you're bringing up points I've never really even considered before. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a serious issue, and and there there is a vote. Uh, the deadline is today. Did, did you mention? That's right. Um, well, what we need to do it's it's interesting because two other EU directives, DG Agri for Agricultural Affairs and DG Environmental Affairs, are opposing this push by the Directorate General. The, they're, they're opposing the, the globalized agricultural lobby. Um, so we have got something on our side, but we really have to email today, um, mm -hmm. the 28th of May, um, sorry, April, we have to email, a very short email, just to ask them to vote no on this law that's going to be presented. On the 6th of May is the is the actual day when the vote is going ahead. But we need to get our letters in today if we can. If we don't manage to get it in today, I would say still send it because hopefully that will have an effect. But also, if you go to my web page, uh, there's a link at the bottom here underneath this interview. And on that web page, you will find out who your local EU representative is. So there are representatives for every country in Europe. So wherever you are in Europe, uh, search your own one out. And then there is also a template letter that you can use if you need to. So the 28th of May, which is today, is the absolute deadline. But if you, uh, if you can't do it today, then please write anyway, because the vote is happening on the 6th of May. So it may be that they will still read your letter and be influenced so to be polite uh, because the people who are receiving your letters are not the ones that are creating the law so just ask very clearly to say no to this law mm -hmm. okay so there's something that we can do and we're voicing our voice in order to protect the rights of every individual and so this is this uh, Juliet has a big impact here in the EU, and I would imagine if this law passes, this would also impact the entire world ecosystem. Yes, because although this seems like it's a European thing, what we're actually dealing with, the, the larger forces at work, is the worldwide globalization. Sorry, that's... Um, repeating myself, but the globalization of farming. We have this massive thing happening now, for instance, with Monsanto, that are, they're buying up uh, land wherever they can, wherever people are put out of business, they're buying their land, they're de developing seeds that, um, uh, GM modified seeds, that forces us to use their their seeds. Uh, there's a lot of issue. I don't want to talk about Monsanto, but this is this is part of the whole picture. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a monopolization of food. Our food chains are becoming a commodity. It means that um, in where our livelihood is totally threatened. They're betting on food in the stock market, for instance, and um, poverty and starvation, which is totally unnecessary and a blasphemy, is part of this whole picture because they are controlling our food sources. That's bad business. That's, uh, when, when we start betting on food... Uh, and uh, starvation as a result, there's some ethical uh, 
dilemmas here that we have, don't we? There's some there's some really large ethical concerns at the moment, really really large, and um, it's really time for us to wake up. The whole planet has got to wake up at this point because if we don't, we will suddenly find ourselves in a position where we have no control at all over our lives and um, we may lose everything. Okay, Juliet. So wake up and then followed by standing up. And the way we can stand up is to voice ourselves right now uh, with a, with an email to your um, EU uh, representative. Um, and, and we will have a link under this program as well. And Juliet will have a link. Uh, so you find your representative and write an email asking to say no in a very polite way uh, Absolutely. To, to this EU law. Absolutely. One last thing, Slade. I would really, really urge people to educate themselves. There is the internet, there is YouTube, there is a lot of information out there that people really, really do start to look at what is going on on the planet and speak out whenever they can. Okay, so exercise our right, which is our voice, and to educate ourselves in the process. Juliet, thank you so much for standing up on Authenticity Radio today. Thank you, Slade, and have a lovely day. All right, thank you. <laughs> this, okay. This is Slade Suter. Until next time, be authentic, be true, write your representative, and be free.